Hey guys, how are you going today? Uh, just another quick video. I don't have much time today, unfortunately. So, but I did want to get something out there for you today. So I thought I'd just give you a quick preview before we actually start painting the High Elf Spearman again. I thought I'd give you a quick preview as to what's coming up uh, that I'll be painting. So I've got some nice uh, Jezgood and Rat Ogres. I've got four of these that I need to do, but I'll just want to paint one of those. There's like a tutorial for doing fur and, and doing Skaven. I've got uh, Throt the Unclean. Um, so he's one of the characters for the Skaven army, very iconic character with his man catcher. So he's quite cool. It's going to need to prime him up and uh, he's ready to go. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a, like a, one of the horses for my wood elves and I'm going to put the Mount the Wizard on top of that. I've got a an old uh, Jez Gooden Wood Elf Mage that I want to use for that. And for the tails, I found out today that I don't have enough tails. So I've got, I went down to the dollar shop and got one of those mold kits, you know, the two silicon halves and you can heat them up in hot water and um, make impressions with your your parts and that kind of thing to duplicate things. So I'll see how that goes and let you know if that works or not, because if it does, then I've got several horse tails I need to make. So that's coming up um, after watching, or well, after seeing, I should say, Mike Hobbs' post on Twitter with his high off um, archers and spearmen and that kind of thing on there. He's doing a high off army. I thought I'd just take one of each of my high elves that I've got uh, currently uh, to do more tutorials on. So I've got a shadow warrior, uh, I've got an archer and a plastic spearman. And looking at them today, yeah, the plastic spearman is a little bit bigger in its proportions, but generally the height and all that kind of thing is very similar, almost the same, but yeah, a uh, little bit little bit of a difference there, but still really beautiful plastic models. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to go back to the time when I first started really getting into painting and, and um, playing Warhammer with those. Uh, I've got a, an old ogre, Jeskwood and Ogre, one of my favorite ones. He's like a warlord ogre or something, I think. I can't remember the exact name given for him, but maybe someone can tell me in the comments. But yeah, really, really beautiful ogre that I've never had, but I've always wanted. And this is for Jesse's uh, Slanesh army. So I look forward to doing that. Maybe I can do some nice freehand on the shield. Um, and for uh, D David, I've got uh, a really nice ogre that he's converted. It looks like he's some kind of um, cannon loader or something like that with that... Um, with that conversion there. So it's a really beautiful model. I don't actually have these models yet. I do want them. I want the five set of um, Gorfang's Ogres. I think that's what he's called, the uh, Mercenary Ogre from Dogs of War. And um, there's their Perry sculpts. They're really beautiful, those ones. So just timeless. So yeah, look forward to doing that. That's for his uh, Mordenheim Warband for the Empire. Um, now, also, I've got the Orc Knob that I want to carry on with. I've just laid down some colors on him. And, yeah, probably in the future we can go back to revisit him at some point so we can start looking at some other different kinds of freehand and, and that kind of thing. We did the Orc Skin, but I want to go and do other kinds of things with him as well. So, yeah, that should be fun. I look forward to painting that. I've got a Gotrek too from David as well that he, he um, kindly gave me. So I just started putting down the base colors for his flesh tone some months ago and just never got back to him. So maybe we can do like a flesh tutorial on him as, apart from the ogre as well. The two ogres or well, the other ogres probably got more flesh than the other one. The um, the Hirohama ogre. So yeah, that'd be quite cool to do that. And of course, I've got the Patri Supreme Patriarch as well. Um, that I've sort of half painted and um, yeah, I want to get into do some horses and cavalry models and that kind of thing Just to vary up the content on the channel to make it a bit more interesting for you guys All right, so getting on with it Let's get stuck into it. I've got a very messy palette. So excuse me for that uh, But can't be helped. I thought I'd just let extend this for as long as I can It's been very warm here today. We've almost had like a summer's day here actually uh, it's been nice though. It hasn't been overly humid, but it's been quite warm. So I don't know what the temperature is like in wherever you are in the world, but... Okay, 
Now, um, I'm gonna put my magnifying glasses on all the magnifying lenses. So we can continue on with this guy and see what we're gonna do next. Okay, so I've just got some of that you know, the snake, -like, snake bite leather brown that I'm gonna do the gloves in. It's like a base, was it quite light? Very light leather for those, so. Um, in news today, we, as, as in me and Justin, did like a video for the podcast yesterday. Uh, it was in vo video format and I made the mistake in that being video format, I couldn't or I wasn't allowed to edit it the way I wanted to by adding the pictures and photographs of the um, you know community's work and our projects and that kind of thing. So we're gonna have to redo it. So hopefully tonight we can do that at some point or just test the audio recording equipment or the application that I have now and see if that works. If it does, then that'd be great. And um, tomorrow at 10, actually, I don't think I can do that. I've got to tell, I have to tell David that I don't think I can make 10 o'clock tomorrow. Unfortunately for our For our uh, podcast interview, I'm going to have to reschedule that. Just thinking now, I have to go out tomorrow, unfortunately. So uh, I just, yeah, our times got sort of mixed up there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, when, when me and David can get together, or me and Dave, I should say, then we can get the interview done, and we should have a podcast up and running by next week. Yeah, this party was red, so I'm gonna just use that beige as a base for that. Now that gemstone's probably gonna be green again and I'm gonna go over this one again. Headband blue, so just put a base of blue on there. Yeah, some more great photographs from some of the guys in the community popped up on Facebook again today. So I've, I've, re, uh, I've saved a lot of photos for the podcast, like images that people can watch and see as they listen. Um, and some I'll include at the end of this video again. So I hope people are enjoying that part of the, the videos because it, it is really good to see or, you know, to highlight people's work really hard work that they put into their painting and projects and that kind of thing. So the more exposure those people get, the better, I think. 
you know, because as you know, painting armies takes an awful lot of dedication and I can understand why people would not be so keen on doing it these days. And people would just rather go with the skirmish op option with, you know, 10 or 15, 20, 20 models aside. Um, and maybe that's a good topic for the podcast too in the future, like, you know, how to encourage people to keep, come back to the hobby into this kind of thing where, you know, there are going to be painting at like at least 80 models for their army or how to encourage people new to the hobby and people who are wanting to start out and how what's the best way to do that. Um, I'll definitely be covering, covering, you know, in the near future, like if someone wanted to play fourth or fifth edition, for example, but they don't have the rule books and, you know, how, how would it be possible for them to get it uh, if they didn't want to, you know, try to scour one on eBay or through the tra uh, trade groups or whatever. If they wanted to avoid that altogether and just want to go in a cheap, like a cheap option just to try it. Um, like I myself and other members have uploaded a whole heap of files in the Facebook group in Hero Hammer and I think I did it in Middle Hammer as well. Uh, like all the spells that you can print out, just sleeve up um, and you know, you're away with those. The magic items you can find either as like an actual PDF. I think, um, I think Dave Lister did a whole massive uh, download of those, all the magic items for, um, for fifth edition two, I believe that he just recently put up. So yeah, for people who really want to try it, but they don't want to invest the money or try to, you know, the hassle of trying to find copies of these really old games. Um, yeah, things like, you know, the file sharing in the groups, uh, your best option. And just printing out the necessary assets um, that are, you know, maybe slightly illegal. Maybe we, we shouldn't be doing that. Uh, but, you know, I don't think Games Worship are going to really worry about us doing that as a fan group base. Um, you know, we're not selling it to anybody. So I don't think they have any major objection to that. So yeah, that's that's a good option too for people who want to get into the game. But yeah, I can I can see why you know painting like a huge army would be so daunting for somebody, like just just getting into it. And you know the skirmish games nowadays are much more appealing. Sorry guys, I'm just sort of working quickly through each of these parts now. Just trying to get some base layers on. The blue I'm just sort of highlighting with like an enchanted blue, I guess. In like the old Citadel terms. I want that um, blue to be quite light. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the people who left their comments and uh, Dan got in touch with me today. So thanks Dan and thanks for the suggestions. I'll have to check those links out that you sent me and we'll get those brushes out to you as soon as possible, mate. So. Now it's just a case of just finishing off all the details on this guy. and then getting him based. And then put away in the cabinet to wait for his fellow soldiers to join him at some point. 
this wasn't actually planned until next year like me doing the high elves but it's just nice to just do a few models just to you know why not it's the holidays for me here you know this whole epidemic saga um, you know has made me quite concerned in some ways but being on holidays I'm sort of not thinking about it so much but like in terms of hobby it's like you know you want to get more done now <laughs> with this, this sort of like looming threat that it's a very you know deadly virus that um, you know even if you don't die from it you know just just the thought of being stuck in a hospital bed somewhere in quarantine for like months on end just, I think that would kill me more than the um, the actual virus being out of being away from home and you know being away from my things that I all my toys here that I love so and my family of course but Sort of highlighting those shoulder pads there. So I hope everybody's safe and well, wherever you are. And I've got to say, you know, big shout out to my, I believe to be Spanish subscribers. There's quite a lot of Spanish subscribers to my channel. Which I found really interesting because I didn't really see the connection with, you know, sort of old hammer, you know, hero hammer, to Spain at all. But it must have, well, it must have had a decent following back in the day. Um, you know, I know that they have, they had stores in countries like Italy and the Netherlands and Germany. But yeah, Spain, I didn't really know there was such a big following of people there for this kind of thing uh, but Spain really has some of the most amazing sculptors and painters now you know people always regarded France as like the leading country for all these amazing talents in Golden Demon and that kind of thing during the day but yeah Spain just really amazing stuff so I really hope to visit Spain one day. That's the plan. Um, and maybe go to the Old Hammer event. They've got like a big Old Hammer event, maybe in Barcelona, possibly, but someone can probably correct me on that. But yeah, I'm, I'm jo I joined that Old Hammer um, Spanish group on Facebook just to see what kind of stuff those guys were doing and they're really producing some really amazing work um, Maxi is one of the guys that you know he he produces a lot he paints a lot of stuff and he'll just constantly update with new stuff that he's been working on uh, every week so I don't know if the guy is like maybe really rich and just sits at home and just paints miniatures all day. I hope so for him, that'd be quite a cool job. Or quite quite a good, you know, uh, living, living um, lifestyle. Yeah, me and Justin had a good chat yesterday about you know, sort of like our origin stories. That was the main sort of reason why I did this whole podcast thing was to people get people on there and talk about how they got into the hobby and it's really more like a nostalgia kind of trip, you know, that people take. And uh, I've always liked that aspect to interviews 
when they always ask people how did you get into the hobby and um, they, I, find, I find that more interesting than the actual interview itself so I might have to contact Dave and ask him if he can do it sometime in the early morning, my, like my early morning, to get our interview done. Um, now some of you might know Dave Lister. He's the, he's the gentleman who did the logo for us for the Crown of Command podcast. He did a really good job on that. And... Um, He's got quite a sizable collection of miniatures, all still in boxes, and he's got cupboards full of it. Uh, but he does paint stuff. He's got stuff painted. He's, he's doing the old world, uh, old world army channels like me. He's doing his wood elves. I think his wood elves are like his favorite army of all time, like the, um, the Ali Morrison 5th uh, uh, Ed, or 4th Ed ones, aren't they? 4th Ed models that he did. And um, yeah, so it'd be really cool to talk to him tomorrow when we have a chance. And uh, yeah, talk about how, how he got into the hobby and, and uh, his, his story. I'm very keen to, um, to hear about that. And like, you know, what's it like in America? Like, are people still playing these old games there or is it completely dead? But I would imagine that um, looking at some of the coverage from Adepticon, that these old games would be played there. And they do, they do play a lot of the games that aren't no, or no longer in production anymore. So I've got a feeling that possibly there are people still playing, you know, fifth edition maybe. I know they're playing Epic Space Marine. I would imagine they're playing, you know, 40k second edition. Yeah, that's huge in America, like the 40k scene, so massive there. So that would not surprise me at all if they're playing that. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab some uh, sepia ink. My son hasn't called out for me to come downstairs yet, so I'm doing pretty well so far. Mind you, having said that, he's probably gonna say it any minute now. He's gonna call for his old man to come downstairs and... Don't stay upstairs, daddy. Give all that brown and face a wash. Oh, I'm quite tired actually, guys, to be honest. So while that's while that's drying, there's a little bit under here actually too. Yeah, while that's drying, um, let's do those gemstones. I'm not really happy with those gemstones, so I'm going to grab some more of that park green. This is quite a vibrant green. That is there a park green here. Is this park green? I think that's jade green, but I might try jade green just for something different. To 
just see how that goes. Just thin a little section out here and yeah, because I'm not really happy with that green as it is now. Oh, the J green looks quite nice too. I was actually using that colour for all the warp stone for the Skaven. Yeah, don't worry about the face, it looks quite dirty and brown and messed up now, so but don't worry about that. We'll clean that up in a minute. Just adding some yellow to that green. There's actually a gemstone here too, isn't there? So Again, I'm being lazy. Most people, I think I did in the past, or used to just, you know, cover them in white and, um, you know, base them in white and go over them in green. I'm just being really lazy here, guys. So yeah, doing that probably is the best way. If you want them really, really bright, to have a nice white underlay underneath the gemstones. But yeah, to be honest, I'm really tired. I'm quite knackered actually, so I'm just gonna. But I wanted I wanted to stay committed in getting a video out every day. And because me and Justin are doing this interview later, I wasn't sure whether I'd have time to do it. I've already taken a buy in the, well, not a buy, it's, um, what do you call it? A mulligan, that's right, a mulligan in this Old World Army Challenge. I just realized I'll just never get in, I'll just never get stuff finished. There's my son coming up now, I think. So yeah, those gemstones look a lot better now. going to be that um, those little gold bands that are around those gemstones too. I'm just going to grab some of that heavy gold brown. So I don't think I have that on my palette yet. So just need a little bit of that. That's all I need. Carefully paint the, paint the outer rim of that casing on the gemstone. Again, you could do that white as well, like as a base, and then go over it in the gold if you really wanted to. But uh, again, I'm just being lazy today, guys. Maybe it's the heat or the couple of beers I drank, but I'm quite tired now. But it's been a really nice day, actually. You tend to forget, like, now being at home, that there is an actual pandemic going on, I find. Especially with beautiful weather like we've had now. So just with some black, I'm just going over the tops of those gemstones. And then... So 
some of that ink. Yep, they look okay. And then a couple things to do, the flesh and the leather. Uh, now the back of the spear also needs to be done. I don't think I'll do it in this video actually, guys. You know, you know the process. I've just done it before on the other one, so. Uh, just follow the same process and you'll be fine. Um, I'm going to use a yellow ochre actually. It's a little bit browner than the the, um, the other ochre. You could use the uh, you could use the uh, the um, sorry beige. I'm talking about sorry. You could use the beige as a highlight and the ochre as like a mid tone. So I'm just going to add some of that brown into that yellow ochre there. And what was it called in the uh, old Citadel paint range, that colour? Was it bestial brown or was it brown? Is bestial brown more of a darker brown? I can't remember. Again, I'll have to look up. This must be some kind of resource online that has all the old paint names on there. And like I'm talking about like the original, original ones they had with the golden demon on the front cover of the box. And they were the best ones, I think, the best paints they ever made. Yeah, the second generation paints were really good too, but yeah, the first generation paints they made were really fantastic. And sometimes you see online that people, you know, they, f they find a set in their attic. It's always in their attic. I really need an attic to hide stuff up there and just forget about it. Then one day I can just go up there and think, oh wow, I've just found all this stuff. It's almost like winning the lottery or something. It's a bit more brown down here. Here, there's a little satchel. Oh, he's got his hair down here too as well, so it's another thing I've missed. that I will use that beige to highlight that actually I think that's a good color for that again beige you know it's it's uh, been probably the most useful paint I've bought and that was from a mistake ordering online so it's one of the best mistakes I've made I think regards to you know buying the wrong well the wrong color or you know being the, uh, the the original paint swatch that I saw online was different sometimes I need to go like through a Google search and find the paints that I want uh, just to check their actual color because people actually have the paints the paint pots and you can see the colors a bit more clearly but it's really hard to tell in, in some cases, whether they are the real the real deal or um, whether they've changed the um, the paint color since then, yes, because some of the swatches they use just don't look anything like the paint when you get it. Sorry for any noise you can hear in the background. I've actually got my window open because it's so warm. And um, 
probably hear some kind of industrial truck out the back dumping or something at the back or something like that but um, hopefully that's not too too much of an annoyance so okay maybe just straight beige then for doing like the very final fingertip highlights So, I'm just going to grab a bit of that black. It's actually black ink, actually, that's dried up. Just to sharpen up that, um, that line here. Now, he's do he does have some little studs on his gloves. Now, the shield, I've got a shield already prepped up for this guy. I'm just going to do the outside of that little stub here in black just in case we can see anything after the shield goes on. It's all covered up. Um, now the face. Now, do I still have that? Oh, I do. Okay, so. There's that sunny skin tone I had on the palette before. I'm using that. Just got some water on there, just to get, dry that off. And basically just sort of just very carefully trying to mark out the the raised areas or contours on his face. And a bit of red here. Might just give his bottom lip a bit of red, a bit of rouge there. Um, yeah, but the face, there's not a lot of definition, there's not a detail there, so I'm not too overly concerned with it. I don't do the eyes on miniatures mostly these days, I just don't see the point. Um, it really depends on, like, if it's a character model or something, I'll probably do it, but rank and file models, I just don't worry about it anymore. I used to. Um, but I think it's such a finicky thing now that um, I don't really bother. So I don't think it really detracts too much from the paint job if the eyeballs aren't done in. But some people are like really fanatical about it and they, everything has to have an eyeball on it. But um, for me, I'm quite happy not to do it. Right, I'm going to just grab some white paint. white just to sharpen up all the really fine edges of the the details on the firstly on these gemstones but one is a little bit too well too big a block there so some corrections as I need to. I like to go in with just a little thin line of black just to make sure there's a line of separation that sort of makes them sort of stick out even more I find. All right so nearly there. I'm gonna grab some of this um, whole red and I'm just gonna um, 
with that just very carefully. Put that between the fingers there. Yeah, and I hope you guys will enjoy the other high off models I'm gonna paint. I'm sort of really keen to do a silver helmet because I've never done, I've never painted one before. And they're probably my all time favorite models in the high off range. So when I've got the, when I've got the tail, the tails sorted out, I might even just paint a silver helmet, you know, instead of the, the wizard. Cause that, that horse I, I've got there is for a silver helm. So yeah, I might do that. They're one of my all-time favorite models, and I just love the studio paint jobs on those. It is so beautiful. Um, yeah, I think I've got to do it. I'm going to have to paint up five anyway for that scenario. So I don't really need the wizard for now, so yep, that's good. I've just talked my, myself into doing that. I like when that happens. And uh, yeah, thanks to my mate Dan in Australia, he's gonna um, send me up some more shields for my high elves, which would be great. And then I will still need some more, so I'll need to hunt down some more along the way. Some blank kite shields and some ones with their embossed um, details on it. That's one of the reasons why I'm making those tails because it's just impossible to get them. No one's gonna have like spare tails for horses. They're very, very rarely. And then if they do, they probably want a pretty high price for them, I'd say. Okay, he's got three little. Bits of detail here. They ally their hair too, because their hair comes right across here at the back. Maybe here as well, because it's going to be the strap, isn't it? Yeah. Right, the hair color. I think I'll just do blonde. And of course, I'm going to use the beige again, because it's such a versatile color that the beige is perfect for um, blonde hair. Let's let that black dry a little bit. Okay, so in the meantime, while that's drying, let's wash out my blush, brush not to contaminate the beige with any black. Just go around and sharpen up any other details that I need to. And if you have a favorite color that you like to use a lot in your painting, please tell me what it is. I'll be interested because, you know, um, sometimes you can, f you can find some hidden gems in paints that you didn't realize that how good they would be once you got them. So yeah, maybe if you've discovered something by accident or you've used a paint forever and um, there's a reason for it like, you, know, you, d you p depend on it for s certain particular um, armies that you paint with, or it's just your fa favorite um, red or blue color or whatever. 
or whatever it might be, yeah, let me know, it'd be quite interesting. sort of in the detail phase and um, just making sure everything looks okay. I think his mouth got um, a little bit too big there. sharpen up some of that silver. look really quite good on the tabletop. Yeah, you know, I don't like rushing my paint jobs anymore. And I was talking to Dan today too from Australia that you know I prefer I prefer doing just small armies now. Not that I had really big armies to begin with, but I just prefer doing just small smaller is better and then just doing those small armies to like the best that you can. You know, I don't have time to play like massive battles that much anyway, any, you know, these days anyway. So I think the smaller, you know, scenario based games are just much more fun than these huge big pitch battle type games. So. And then me and Justin will talk about you know, our plans for our Empire and um, Skaven like mini campaign we're doing for that. And, you know, I'm sort of just can't wait to get into it now. I, I think Justin feels the same way. And uh, we're still painting yeah, miniatures for our armies for that. But, you know, we're getting there. We're getting, so, well, I haven't done anything all, all this month, actually, or last month now. So read the second of um, May, isn't it? So yeah, it's just flying by. But um, well, uh, part of the reason is I'm doing all the terrain. I just did some base coats to with a primer on um, one of the buildings, the watchtower, yesterday. So I hope to get started on that over the holidays. And I hope to actually finish painting that and some other items too before the end of the holidays, if at all possible. Yeah, so that blue is a nice match for the silver helms too, I think, eh? because it sort of matches their color. They've got like a very enchanted blue look to them. Alright now. I 
Okay, so he's not looking too bad now. Um, yeah, he's almost, almost done, I think, apart from the shield. And those little studs on his, on his gloves. Um, what can we do with those in? See if I can just sort of scratch up some of this light gray up here with some white in it. I think like a bright silver. Too fussy about it because I'll never get these finished so it's not really the neatest but I think for you know what I want to do it's not too bad and I can always go back and just you know at the end I always usually do that anyway when I'm painting a whole unit of guys I'll go over them at, right at the end and just check everything sort of balanced out but those gloves probably need some more work I'd say now the shoulder pads I haven't forgotten those I almost did I'm just gonna put some white like on the waistband that he has there that belt I'm really tired, that's why. That's my excuse. Can't see the third one there, so... That's okay, I think I might just leave it there for now, guys. I think we've pretty much almost completed him. I need to just do some maybe extra touching up of uh, fine points on there. Uh, before adding the shield or after adding the shield. Oh, there's the bottom part of his scabbard too that I forgot. Um, now, we use this dark gray, didn't we? That's something I can do by myself later. It's not really necessary. Like with the back of that spearhead as well, I need to do that anyway. So let me do that after I do and probably get a new clean palette as well because that's quite, quite messy and dirty now. But generally, yeah, you know that's going to be um, what he's going to look like. That'll be his shield that I'm going to prime up, hopefully tomorrow. And um, uh, yeah, we might put we might put that in a video too. Um, and uh, so you can see how I do a shield and how that's done. And yeah, then on that with some uh, goblin green base, and um, I think he looks should, should look quite cool. So yeah, it's been quite exciting. So thanks guys. Sorry I'm a bit tired today. I'm not sort of my energetic self and I can tell that, you know, I don't think I'll be doing much painting this evening. I think I'm just going to be crashing out and watching Netflix and probably just doing some rebasing work and that kind of thing today, I'd say. So yeah, take care of yourselves. Um, hope, everything's, hope everybody's well, well and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, take care. Bye.